Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, in our last video, we took a look at how to install Chasm Docker containers uh, in Docker, uh, where you would expect to install Docker containers. And um, I, I wanted to take just a moment to uh, kind of explain something here. Uh, the last video was just meant to show uh, primarily how to install Docker containers as one-off instances for, uh, for whatever use you've got for each of those different containers. Um, I did show Chasm Workspaces, and of course, that's what this video is about. But, but really, I just showed Chasm Workspaces in that previous video to let you know that it was there, it was available. Uh, so like I said, in this video, what I wanna show is how to install Chasm Workspaces on an Ubuntu server setup. So as I mentioned, we are going to be using Ubuntu 20.0 uh, and basically I'm gonna put this in a VM on Synology. I'm gonna give it four cores, four gigs of RAM and about 50 gigs of hard drive space. Those are kind of the bare minimums that you'll need. Well, you'll need two cores and four gigs of RAM and 50 gigs of hard drive space, but I'm gonna give it a couple extra cores uh, just to make things run a little bit more smoothly. So again, I'm gonna run all of that in a VM. You can run this in a VM, you can run this on bare metal, uh, basically however you want, but uh, this will not work on Raspberry Pi to my understanding. So uh, unfortunately that's just not an option. So once you've got your, your Ubuntu server, if you're gonna follow along, follow along using that. Once you've got that set up and ready to go, uh, let it do all of its updates and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so once your install is done, you can go ahead and uh, just, oops, uh, I just clicked out of that screen. Uh, click on reboot now. Uh, we'll give this a second to reboot. Uh, then it'll come up. We'll wanna run some updates. I don't know why. Oh, we'll go ahead and press enter there. Uh, well, it did some updates here. When we restart, uh, it may want to do more updates. So we'll give that a minute to kind of sort itself out. And then once we're done with that, we can actually jump in to the install process. Okay, so here we are, we're back on our home screen. Now this may, exactly what I thought it was gonna do, uh, kind of take off and start doing some additional things here. Uh, so once uh, once we're good here, in fact, you know what, what we can do is uh, come back over to, I've got, where's my, my cursor? There we go. Uh, let's, let's just do an, uh, we'll do, SSH uh, and then my username at 192.168.1.208, I believe. Uh, yep, so we're gonna go ahead and say yes. We wanna go ahead and include that uh, into our trusted servers and then like so, hopefully there it goes. Uh, there we go. So um, so now we've got about a hundred gigs of, of storage space we can use uh, to do this. If you were paying attention during the little Thing that I did where I was going through that process of setting up, you'll see that it was only 50 gigs. I ran into an issue and I had to go through that whole install process again, but uh, it was the exact same process. I just gave it more storage this time. So here we are, we're good to go. So let's do a sudo apt uh, update and then I'll put in my password. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and just minimize that. We don't need that up and running anymore. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so we've got 79 packages. So we'll do upgrade. Uh, and then we'll say yes, oops, darn it, uh, yes, like that. We'll go ahead and let this do its thing and then we'll come back uh, when it's done uh, to actually start the process of installing Chasm workspaces on Ubuntu 20.04. Okay, so we've completed all of the updates that it needed to do here. Uh, so the next thing what we can do is actually start the install process uh, of Chasm Workspaces. So uh, I will have some links in the description for all of this so that you can uh, you can jump over to there and take a look at these different uh, commands as I'm entering them. Um, but the, let's tell you what, let's do this first. Uh, do, do, do. I'm just gonna grab those three and bring them up here. Okay, so we've got server downloads. Uh, we're gonna need the link. We're gonna right click this and copy link address. We're gonna store that link for some uh, in a notepad or something for, for later. We're gonna need that. Um, over here, we've got uh, all of the, the commands that we're gonna run. Again, this will be available in the description down below. And then over here, we've got system requirements. Uh, definitely check this out uh, before you go too far. Too far. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, two cores, four gigs, 50 gigs, or four gigs of RAM, 50 gigs, hard drive space. They're recommending SSD. Uh, I'm doing this on a NAS VM. Uh, so SSD isn't really an option here, uh, but it worked just fine when I ran, uh, when I ran this as a test setup uh, here recently. So as long as you meet two cores, four gigs and 50 gigs, you should be perfectly fine to run this uh, on your system, uh, as long as you're using one of the supported operating systems. Again, we're using uh, Ubuntu 20.04 uh, in, in this particular configuration. So uh, basically what we can do, uh, let's go ahead and minimize this. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is actually create a swap partition. Uh, basically that's going to, uh, I'll come back over to here. Uh, where did it go? Right here. Uh, 
Yep, so right here, the following steps will create a one gig swap partition. It's recommended to allocate one gigabyte per concurrent six, uh, session you expect to run at any given time. Please adjust according to your needs. I I'm gonna set mine up to four gigs, uh, and I've got all these commands set up over here, but let's go ahead and clear this screen. Uh, basically, I'll just right click. We're gonna do uh, sudo f allocate uh, four gigs uh, in, in our mount partition, four gig swap is what we're gonna call it. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is, uh, uh, a ch mod. We're going to do a ch mod 600 uh, for that swap file that gives the permissions that it needs in order to uh, work properly. Uh, then we're going to do a sudo uh, make swap, like so. Uh, again, just very very simple there. Setting up swap space version one size four gigs. No label. There we go. And then what we want to do is actually make sure that that is turned on. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now we're good to go there. The next thing we'll want to do is actually verify that the swap file exists. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And there we go. There's our four gig swap that we just created. So that's good. That means uh, if we've made it this far, things are going well uh, and we're, we're getting closer to done than you might actually <laughs> realize here. So uh, the next thing we wanna do uh, is we're going to make the swap available on boot uh, by running this command. So we're gonna echo um, this mount four gig swap uh, default zero, zero sudo. So basically we're just gonna put this in the FS tab uh, set up so that when it boots, everything does what it's supposed to do. So just like that, there we go. We're almost done, believe it or not, we are almost done uh, as far as commands that we have to enter. So the next thing I wanna do is actually uh, change directory over to the temp directory, just a good place to work. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna do a sudo wget, and then we're gonna use that URL that we just copied and pasted a moment ago uh, from over here. Uh, no, from over here. So uh, this is that same URL uh, that is uh, that is right here, this Chasm static content, S3, uh, Amazon, Chasm releases, uh, all of that, that URL is what I copied uh, from that link a moment ago. So we're just gonna go ahead and click go. Um, and there we go, we downloaded that file, very small file, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just a zip file <clears throat> or tar file, I suppose. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is actually extract said tar file uh, by doing tar space dash XF. Um, oops. <laughs> uh, and then not all of that. <clears throat> I will have that fixed. There we go. We're just going to extract that uh, from there. And then we do an LS. Um, there we go. Now we've got a chasm release folder uh, right here. Uh, and that's actually the folder that we're gonna work in next. Uh, basically what we're gonna do, in fact, let, let, let's switch directories here just so you can see it. We'll do a CD chasm uh, and then we'll do an LS. And then right here, we've got this install.sh. Uh, basically what we're gonna do, oops, is we're just going to uh, do a, a sudo bash on that uh, just to run uh, that install.sh script. Uh, we're just gonna do that. We're gonna say yes. Uh, obviously read that, make sure you agree to it. Uh, but for the sake of keeping this tutorial simple, uh, we're just gonna say yes right there. Uh, and then it's gonna go through this really, really long process. This could take 10 or 20 minutes, again, depending on your, your system configuration, your hardware, things like that. Uh, this may take a little while. So uh, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill the camera. Uh, I'm gonna let this keep recording. Uh, and then uh, once it's done, we'll come back and uh, we'll take a look at a couple of things. Actually, there, there was one thing that I forgot to mention here. Uh, again, I'm doing this on a VM. This is gonna be the only thing in this VM, so it didn't apply to me, but you may have the need to change. Uh, by default, this is gonna run on port 443. That's your, your SSL, your secure port. If for whatever ne reason you need to change port 443 to something else, uh, you can actually change that. Um, let me copy that. I'm just gonna open it up a new tab here. Um, once you're, once you're back to that where we did that uh, sudo bash uh, install.sh. Uh, instead of that, uh, you could do the same thing here, but you do a dash capital L and then whatever port you need to run that on. Um, so the, in this case, they've got the, 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 the demonstration here uh, or the example is 8443. Uh, you would just do th uh, that dash L 8443 or whatever you need that port to be uh, instead of just leaving it blank. If you leave it blank, it'll install on port 443. Otherwise change it this way. Okay, so that did take uh, quite a while, uh, probably about 20 minutes or so. I wasn't really keeping track, but I'm gonna say about 20 minutes for my setup to complete. Uh, one thing you will notice here is that we did get some uh, login credentials um, where where we can see the, the admin username, just a default user, 
uh, username and password. Uh, we've got some database stuff, some Redis stuff, some uh, manager tokens. Uh, basically at this point, we're set up and ready to go. Now it's at this point, I do kind of want to stop um, because we are only going to do this locally. Now, one of the things that I experienced, and actually other people in my Discord experienced, is that running this uh, via uh, Nginx proxy manager on a domain name didn't work. Uh, that's something I'm still looking into to see if I can figure out why it's not working. And hopefully maybe you guys can tell me uh, what you can do to get uh, Chasm workspaces to work behind Nginx proxy manager. Um, anyway, that's something else I'm going to look into uh, just to make sure that we can access this basically from anywhere on a domain name. Hopefully that's an option. If not, uh, we'll find out here uh, hopefully before the next video. So uh, here we are. We've got all of our login credentials here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just drag this out of the way. I'm gonna go over here to HTTPS uh, colon, oops, colon forward slash forward slash uh, 192.168.1.208. Like so. Okay, now this says your connection isn't private. That's fine. It's a self-signed certificate. No worries. Go ahead and click there and proceed. And then here we are. Uh, we're on our login screen here. So let's go ahead and log in as an admin. Uh, it's going to be admin at chasm.local uh, uh, for the username and then whatever password showed up in your uh, in your terminal window here. I, I highly recommend uh, copying and pasting this somewhere safe uh, so that you can access it later if you need to. Um, but just know that that's where your credentials are for logging in, both as an admin user, as well as a uh, kind of a generic uh, default user. So let's go ahead and get logged in here. And here we are, we're logged in. Now this looks very much different than we saw uh, in the last video in that little run through that I did there. But uh, as an admin and user, you can actually come up here to workspaces uh, right here and access all of this stuff uh, as you would expect to do. Let's just click on Brave there real quick. Click on launch a session. Uh, give this just a minute to do its thing here. Cool, welcome to workspaces. Uh, the control panel can be found on the left side of the desktop. Great. I'm not I'm gonna have it not show me that again. I'll click got it. Uh, and then yeah, here we go. We're gonna disable that. That's fine. Again, if you want to uh, be able to copy images and text back and forth uh, between your desktop and this, uh, you can allow that or not allow it, depending on what your preferences are. Uh, I'm going to not allow it, but uh, but basically at this point, you know, this works uh, just like we saw uh, when we were doing these installs in Docker. Um, so basically, uh, this is up and running, so we can come back over to here. Uh, over here, we've got a lot of different options. Uh, we've got sound enabled, microphone enabled or disabled, uh, clipboard, uh, downloads, uh, uploads, so you can upload or download files from here. Uh, your streaming quality, you can adjust this depending on what your network uh, is capable of doing. I'm just gonna leave this on medium for right now. Um, you can share a session with somebody. Um, you can prefer a local cursor or not. Uh, you can return to workspaces there. And, and if you wanted to, you could open up uh, another session. Uh, now, keeping in mind that uh, the more sessions you open, the more of that swap space that we set up earlier is going to use. So uh, definitely make sure you've got a good amount of swap space set up uh, before you start opening a bunch of different sessions here. Uh, we're just gonna click cancel, that's fine. Uh, but here we are, uh, you know, hello uh, world. So now we've got, uh, We've got this working as well. So let's say we're done. Uh, you know, we wanna we wanna come back over here to workspaces. Now we can actually see that we've got a couple of different uh, active sessions going on. At any point, uh, you can you know you can click over here on resume, come right back into your workspace. Uh, let's come back over here. Or if we want to, hey, I don't need that sublime text anymore. I can just go ahead and delete it, free up some swap uh, and not have a bunch of unnecessary stuff running in the background. So uh, that's how to set this up. That's really all I wanted to show in this video is just how to set up workspaces. Uh, in another video, we'll come back over here to admin and we'll take a deeper look at uh, the admin area of things uh, as and we'll talk a bit more. Actually, you know, let's talk about it now. You have the option over here under images. Um, you know, right here is all of the different images that are available uh, presently in the system. Now, you can uh, add your own images to this if you want to. However, uh, based on what I, I heard from Chasm and reading uh, their stuff, uh, the image has to be built on their uh, on their base image in order to be imported into here. So uh, what I mean by that is you can't use like a Linux server.io uh, Docker image in here. You'll have to build uh, your own image on top of their base image in order to be able to import it into here. So uh, that's something we may look at at another time. Uh, just know that it's something that, 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 that that's kind of the route you'd have to go for that to work.
So uh, there's a bunch of other stuff in here we can go in and take a look at at a later date. Really what I wanted to do was kind of start at ground zero and just get Chasm Workspaces installed in this video. So uh, that's Chasm Workspaces installed in this video. Uh, so hopefully you found the video helpful. Hopefully you'll get subscribed to follow along for further videos as we take a deeper dive into Chasm Workspaces. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited to get into this and, and get more familiar with it and share that experience with you guys. And hopefully we can kind of share experiences uh, back and forth with each other, with the community, that sort of thing. So uh, definitely get subscribed if you're interested in learning more about Chasm. Uh, if you want us to support the channel, of course, uh, links for all of that will be in the description with all of the links uh, to be able to follow along with this as well. Uh, but I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.